Thank you. One of the most important capabilities of people is to interact with each other. We negotiate and we fight. We argue and we make peace. We work in teams. We work in pairs. We help one another. Look at my kids. I have five kids and seven grandchildren. Try to guess who is who. They interact all the time, even when they are sleeping. I develop intelligent agents that interact proficiently with people. When, when I say agent, I don't mean FBI agent or CIA agent. My agents are more similar to matrix agents. They are autonomous. They know how to plan. They adapt to the environment. They interact with each other and with people, and they're able to learn. My agent can be located on robots, or they can, usually, I focus on software agents that are on our computer or on the internet. Actually, I was interested in interactions since I was very young. I wanted to be a speech therapist. The problem was that by the time I decided to register to be a speech therapist, the deadline was over. So my father told me, you know, instead of waiting a year, why won't you start studying uh, this not that requested research area, computer science. And, you know, after a year, you can transfer back to be a speech therapist. And what he said then is computer science is the future. So I started learning computer science and never transfer back. And today I'm a professor of computer science. So, from the beginning, computer science or no computer science, you know, I was doing research about systems that interact proficiently with people. My first agent for the, my PhD was able to negotiate with people in a game called diplomacy. Now, think about it. This was in the middle of the 80s. Almost no one had email. Internet? Who heard about internet? And people thought that agents that interact proficiently and negotiate with people is science fiction. So, how do I build computer agents that interact proficiently with people? The first thing you need to do is to try to predict people activities. How people will respond to my agent actions. So if you will make an offer, will this offer be accepted or not? But predicting people behavior and modeling people is extremely difficult. Why? Because people are very annoying. <laughs> they are ruining my experiments. Why? Because we are sensitive to context. But what can agents that interact proficiently with people do? So there are three possibilities. One, they can help people. Two, they can help training people. And three, they can replace people. So, for example, Recently, we built an agent that was helping people that argue with one another by whispering in their ear good argument in the discussions. <laughs> this agent is extremely useful to me when I'm trying to convince my son, come on, leave your smartphone and go to play outside. <laughs> I must tell you, 
even when I have the agent, I'm not that successful. <laughs> okay, so agents can also be used to train people, especially in simulation of role playing. You know, even the US Army, they realized that for soldiers to know how to shoot, eh, it's important. But for them to know how to negotiate and argue with villagers in Afghanistan is even more important. So we can build an automated agent and negotiate with people and can replace the villager in Afghanistan. Now think about it, this soldier can train anytime, anywhere, and be a good negotiator. But of course, eventually, we would like agents to replace us. For example, in negotiation, where, or bargaining, you know, I would like to send my agent to the internet to buy me something on eBay and bargain and get me the best deal. So, how do we build such an agent? So let me give you an example. The, we develop a game that is based on my events that I had with my kids. So when they were small, we took them once to the zoo. And we bought them popsicles. And one brown, and to Tali, a yellow one. Popsicles. So after a while, Tali came to her and said, you know, why won't we switch the popsicles? I will give you my yellow one, and you'll give me your brown one. Or he said, of course, let's switch. He gave her his popsicles. Tali took the two popsicles and ran away. <laughs> well, I bought her a white one, but then next time, when Tali wanted to exchange something with Zori, he said, no, 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 I'm not making deal with you anymore. It took her a while to realize that keeping agreements, it's quite good strategy. So we took this game and we built it and wanted to have an agent that negotiate with people in such setting. So what do we have? We have first negotiation about exchange of resources, okay? Then there is some process of implemented the agreements, and agreements are not enforceable. And then next time they can negotiate again and so forth. And we wanted to build an agent that will play the role of the negotiator across countries. So what do we do when we want to develop agents that can negotiate with people across countries? So first of all, we collect examples. So we collected examples of people negotiations in these situations in two countries, a Western country and in Beirut, in Lebanon. Now I will ask you, what do you think? Who keeps more agreement, people in Lebanon or people in this Western country? Lebanon. Okay, so first we got the data, the examples of the people in the Western country, and they sometimes kept agreement, sometimes not. And then the data from Lebanon started to arrive. I looked at it and I called my colleagues in Maryland and told her, they didn't understand the game. <laughs> they keep all the agreement. She called immediately to her friend in Beirut. And he told her, no, 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 they did understand the game. You know, in Beirut, when you go to the store and you forget your purse, you'll say, I'll pay tomorrow and you will come tomorrow and pay. No one will take notes. And the statistic was unbelievable. People in Beirut really kept agreements. So now we have an agent that had to behave differently in each country, 
based on the examples that we collected. We send it to three countries, Israel, Lebanon, and US. More than 150 people played with this agent, and he did extremely good, and they didn't realize it's in the agents. So I was extremely happy with them. So this was an example where agent replace people. But sometimes we need to keep, I'm not that happy about this, but we need to keep people in the loop. And an example is about a set of robots that are looking in to find a, a predefined object. Green balls, for example, casualties, you know, dangerous stuff. So these agents are located, our agents are located on the robots, and the robots are moving around looking for the predefined object, in our case, are green balls. These are my robots moving in my, my laboratory. Okay, so why do we need a person here? So first, we would like the human operator to confirm that the object identified by the robots are the really the ones that we are looking for. Green box and no green, green balls and no green boxes, yes? Second, my robots tend to get into troubles. For example, in, in the experiments, they were getting into the ladies' room and were not able to get out of it. So the human operator had to drive them very, very carefully outside. So that's one thing he should do. Another thing is that they were getting stuck, bump into things, and they really needed his uh, help. However, currently, in the current state of the art, one operator can manage eight robots, mainly nine robots, but if we really want to have a good team of 10, 20 uh, uh, robots, we are in a big trouble. A person can't do it. So then we had an idea. We build an agent that will help the operator. How can the agent help the operator? Well, first, in some actions, replace him, but in some times, help him manage his task. You know, rate him, etc. And then, after developing the agent, we ran an experiment. We took 10 robots, a human operator, and distributed 20 uh, green balls in the lab and let him, let the robots look for the green ball. Now, with, when the operator was with the agent and without the agent. Now, with the agents, they found on average seven balls. And without the agents, they found on average 14 balls. Well, I, I must tell you, the agent really helps. Try, come to my lab, you know, we always look for subjects to play with our agents and see that the robot, that the agent really helps the person. So, last example is about me closing a circle and building automated speech therapist. I must tell you, having an automated speech therapist is much better than me being a speech therapist. Why? Because the automated speech therapist that we built in Gertner Institute in Sheba is available all the time, 24 hours, anywhere that the patient is located, he can get a session of speech therapies. So, and it saves time and money, and we would like to build other agents like this. For example, automated physiotherapist, automated tutor to my son to teach him math, automated 
customer service. All will build our computers and will help us. And it will be much easier and will save us time and money. In order to make this science fiction technology possible, there is still much work to do. And we are doing it. We are working on it. Thank you.